Good, whatever it is, morning or afternoon here in Pennsylvania. It's early afternoon and it is snowing in March. So I'm using my snow day to make some more math videos. And this one is for Math Pace 1091. I just want to review a couple of important things that you already covered on pages 1 through 14. <clears throat> but before you try to do the checkup here on page 15, 16, let's talk about this, all right? One is using a protractor. And uh, not all protractors are like the ones that the pace pictures. This one, for instance, and I'll bring it up a little closer here so you can see it. Here's the dot, and there's a line that goes across here. So when I'm measuring an angle, I'm actually not using the bottom of the protractor. I need to use this line that goes through the circle, and then it connects over here to the zero point, and over here to the zero. <clears throat> So I'm going to make an angle like that, okay? And if I want to measure it, then I'm going to line up the, this line on the protractor with the zero mark with the pencil line that I just drew, and then make sure that the vertex, the very tip of the angle is, hey, come on, is inside, there we go, inside the dot. All right, I don't know how clear that is. Hopefully you can see that. Now to measure the angle, I come over here and there's two numbers. Here's a 140 and here's a 40. <clears throat> so I need to figure out which one of these am I gonna use and which way am I headed, okay? So this, obviously this angle is less than 90 degrees. It's an acute angle. So I'm not going to use the numbers up here because these are greater than 90. Those would be obtuse angles. So I want to use this one and I notice that right here it says 40 degrees and right here is 50 degrees. So I'm counting the little tick marks in between and I would say this is at 42 degrees. Okay? So in measuring the angle, I would say 42 degrees. If I'm drawing an angle and I want to make it, let's say, 50 degrees, then the first thing to do is draw a line and then pull the protractor down to put the end, right, the dot, right inside uh, the end of the line. And then I go up here and find where the 50 mark is, 50 degrees. I'm going to follow that straight up. It's the same as the 130, and I put a dot right outside of that, okay? Then I can go back and just use the straight edge part because now I'm, all I'm doing is drawing a line and connect the dot that I just put on there with the end and that should be 50 degrees, okay? I want to talk about one other important thing and just help you kind of keep it straight. Sometimes students get confused about the difference between complementary angles, angles and supplementary. And my black is running out, so I'm gonna toss that over there. <clears throat> Complementary means two angles add up to be a 90 degree angle. So this angle plus this angle add up to be a 90 degrees, complementary, okay? <clears throat> Supplementary means that two angles, let's say this one and this one, when you put them together, it equals a straight line, which is 180 degrees, okay? So 90 degrees for complementary, and supplementary is double that. 180 is double the 90. Sometimes, I, I don't know if this helps students or not, but it helps me keep it straight. C, one loop, corresponds to 90, and if I put another loop underneath it, Another 90, do you see how that kind of forms an S to be <laughs> double the C? So an S is a double C. Supplementary is double the 90. So 90 is complementary, 180 is supplementary. If I know that this angle for here, for instance, is 50 degrees, then I can easily subtract and know that this has to be 130. Okay? Up here, if this one is 40 degrees, then this one has to be 50 degrees because together the two of them equal 90. 
There's a lot of other terminology that you need to know as you're going through this pace, and particularly as you're studying for this checkup. Um, we have a lot of those terms for you there, acute, obtuse, and uh, vertex, things like that, line versus line segment, transversal. It's important that you learn these terms. When you move on in, and in 10th grade you get to geometry, you're going to come back and do a lot of these and really have to know them well at that point. Okay, uh, I think on page 16 you're just measuring angles and copying them by using the number of degrees. So I'm going to come back <coughs> and we're going to do a video for page 18 about copying angles using a compass.